Uh, you know, we had genocide in 1994. So the horrible stuff happened. I lost 13 members of my family. I mean, brothers and sisters, I don't count parents. So it was so hard for us. Then luckily I get scholarship to go to study in Italy in, in 2005, which I went in Italy and spent five years in Italy. Then in 2000, I completed my study and come back. So coming back, I get a job, very nice job, Minister of Tourism, where it's to travel around the world, really to promote the Rwandan tourism. So it was very nice job and really my earning was very good. But uh, one of my trip back in Rwanda in October 2001, because I was just about nine months working as a sub in the Ministry of Tourism. So from that point, I was coming back, they told me that they're going to retain my passport. So when I tried to understand why they want to retain my passport, I said, no, no, no. Actually, this is a property of government. They can take it anytime they want. So, okay. We will tell you maybe what we'll do with your passport. It was very confusing. I understood one of my uncle was political active, and he even became the president of Rwanda. By 2000, in June, he resigned to be president. But nine months later, of course, he began some political activity and wanted to create a political party. That was a big problem. So from that point, I can say anyone who belonged to this man, or who know this man, who's friendly to this man, became in trouble. So the next morning I was arrested and uh, taken to that high security detention. There, it was horrible stuff going on because they ask you things which you never know. And sometimes they think you are lying them. And there they take you into the torture chamber and they hardly beat you. So you don't know the answer. At the end, you are suffering for nothing. So I spent four months in this detention. They continued to ask me a lot of questions, but at the end, I agreed to sign, let us say, guilty plea. I accept, I said, well, I can accept anything you're accusing, but don't beat me again. Already I got some injury on me. So, which means I'm accused by trying to destabilize Rwanda. This is a huge accusation. Someone who, bring, who tried to bring this hatred between Tutsi and Mutu. That was a horrible accusation in Rwanda. And from that point, you go to jail and anyone hate you. So I spent four months there. And as I told you, I got a lot of friends, relatives in the army, everywhere. Well, at the end, they realize I'm innocent and they try to find a way to get me out. So the 22nd of February, my name was called, like in detention. Usually when they call your name on that time, they need either to change your detention, either to ask you a few questions or something like that. So when my name was called, I was shaking and didn't know that time, 11 o'clock at night, it's unusual to call someone on those times. So when getting there, to the reception, main reception, from the banker to the office where the, the office is, and say, well, get into the car, handcuff me, and get into the car, say, we are changing your detention. I knew there was something wrong. Either they're going to do bad things to me, either they're going to kill me. That thought began to come in mind. But on going, I realized these people are quite friendly. And they tried to talk to me, to reassure me. Say, well, don't worry, we are taking you somewhere. Where? But we are going to a town. I can say, well, this is not taking me to, I know many detention in Rwanda which I would know they are taking me, which is detention, so they are taking me in town. I begin to think, well, maybe they, something going to happen here. So we arrive in one destination in Kigali, and there I find one of my best friends, actually, and say, well, Ali, you don't need to wait another minute here. And he handed to me an envelope, which quite a lot of money on it, around $6,000. I said, you go now. The car took me to the Ugandan border, which is around 
70 miles from Kigali, where we waited until early morning and crossed like uh, uh, people in the village, so no one we know, no soldier. Arrive in Uganda the same morning, go to Kampala. Around 12 o'clock I was already in Kampala, but my first instinct was, let me call my wife to know what's going on. But on calling my wife, on her reply, say, Jackie, sorry, I will call you out, I go to visitors. Straight away, I understood there's something wrong there. And that's when I tell my host in Uganda, I say, well, I phone home, this is what, can you try to phone home? Say, Ali, it's horrible for you. And that's when he showed me that my picture, even in East African Interpol, and they are saying I'm type of terrorist, someone who's dangerous. I'm arms, no one can approach me. If they need to see me, they need to alert the police. So it becomes scary, which means they're going to catch me even in Uganda and send me back. I still have my Italian residence, which if I had my passport, I could take my ticket and go to Italy. So my first instinct was to go to Italy. So that's where I'm allowed to stay. But I don't have passport, how I can travel to Italy. So the man, my host in Kampala, the third day, he brings someone, say this is, his job is to take people in Europe. And he come with three passports. And say, well, you choose which one you're going to travel with. So on seeing these three passports, really none of them look like me, totally. They are different people. And I said, well, how I can travel with this passport? And the guy tell me, this is my job. Just choose which one you want to travel with. 